Hi, and welcome back to Your Autism Game Plan. I'm Joya Vanderlund, a family nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and an autism mom myself. I've been talking a little bit about inflammation. Inflammation is so important. Go back and watch my other videos on inflammation. Today, I wanna to talk to you about what can you do about this inflammation. Most of our kids with autism have some level of inflammation, whether we realize it or not. We may not realize it because the symptoms are so varied. Inflammation can cause skin issues, rashes. It can cause GI issues, diarrhea, constipation. It can cause behavior issues, meltdowns, sleeping problems, um, ob obsessions, uh, impulsivity, um, all sorts of different things. So we really want to do our best to address this root cause. Inflammation can be a root cause of so many different things. And it's another example of when we find and treat a root cause, so many different symptoms can be resolved by taking care of one root cause. So let's have a look at what we can do to decrease instead of increase inflammation. I've been focused on autism for the last few weeks in these videos. And the reason is it's just so important. It's very, very much a huge issue with our autistic kids, yes. Now, could it be causing symptoms in our autistic children? Absolutely, yes. And if we help or decrease the inflammation, might we see some improvements in our autistic kids? Yes. Now, that's not the only reason you should care about inflammation. Inflammation is one of the common threads or root causes even for a lot of different disease processes like diabetes, like heart disease, like stroke, dementia, all sorts of other things. So really attacking inflammation, treating, decreasing inflammation is not only good for our kids, it's really good for us as well, for everyone. And so that's another reason why if you're going to make changes to try to decrease inflammation in your child, it's really great if the whole family, especially with something like diet, can make these changes as well. Everybody's going to be better off for it. You know, diet is a place where we can make some pretty significant and impactful changes with minimal effort. I want to talk about sugars and fats as they relate to autism and inflammation. Sugars, whether it be artificial sweeteners, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, um, anything like that is going to increase inflammation levels, partly because of its relationship with cortisol and insulin and how it increases those things. And then fats, you know, we eat a lot of omega-6 fats, processed fats, packaged foods that have those fats in them. And even when we're cooking at home, if we're cooking with vegetable oil, canola oil, that sort of thing, those are um, inflammatory fats. We want to avoid those as much as we can. So what do we use in our house? Well, for sweeteners, I prefer allulose, A-L-L-U-L-O-S-E, allulose, and then monk fruit, and we use some stevia a little bit. Um, we don't use a whole lot of erythritol because that can cause some bloating, gassiness, um, just some stomach discomfort, especially in kids. So we will use the allulose, the monk fruit we'll use, um, sometimes stevia we will use smaller amounts of coconut sugar, date sugar, uh, maple syrup, honey, um, those kinds of more natural sweeteners. In terms of the fat, we eat organic chicken, grass-fed beef, wild-caught fish whenever we can. Um, and then I use um, olive oil if I'm not going to be cooking at high temperatures with it. I'll usually put it on vegetables after they're cooked. Um, but for cooking, we usually use coconut oil or avocado oil, which both are good for higher heat stir-frying and so on. So see what kind of anti-inflammatory changes you can make to your child's diet this week. Whether it's adding a anti-inflammatory food in or taking out something that is inflammatory, causing inflammation for your child. I would challenge you to see what changes you can make this week. While sugar and fats are a big culprit of inflammation in our kiddos, there are other reasons that people, our autistic children specifically, can be experiencing higher levels of inflammation. That can include gut dysbiosis or an overgrowth imbalance in the gut for sure can cause inflammation. Uh, chemical or environmental toxicities can cause inflammation. Um, and then also, of course, food sensitivities can cause inflammation as well if they're eating the foods to which they're sensitive. So keep in mind, diet, avoiding those bad sugars, sweeteners, those bad fats, is definitely an easy way to subtract things that are bad 
add things that are good, but also keep in mind other reasons for inflammation as well. Well, I hope you have learned something new today, something that you can use at home today to help your child. Thanks for watching, and remember, be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.